everybody, Jessica Henry here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am excited to introduce you to plein air painting down by the water. Um, I uh, brought my kids to windsurf today, and so it's kind of fun. We're down by the lake, and I even venture on the board at the end. Anyway, so this is a great plein air video. I am doing this painting, and I also wanted to say a special thank you to our sponsor for today's show. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. So stay tuned and there's a little bit more information on that. I think you're gonna like what you hear. It's pretty cool. It's sort of like a hybrid of Netflix and YouTube. All right, you guys, enjoy the show. I am at the New London Water Reserve. It's a beautiful lake and you're gonna hear all kinds of sounds in the background of families and fun and just the sounds of summer. So what I'm gonna do is, today my lesson is going to be on composing a scene. And I'm gonna take different elements behind me here. I love the rocks and the trees. I just love the way these reeds are kind of blowing in the wind. So I'm gonna take all of those different elements and sort of compose a picture uh, based off that. So I'm gonna show you how I do that and let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna take different components of this scene and just take the rocks and the reeds and some of the water and the trees and just put it together in a sketch. So first, I have a couple different canvases. I have an eight by 10 and a nine by 12. I'm gonna see which format I like, if I like it horizontal or for vertical. And I'm just gonna play with this idea. I, I had um, one YouTuber ask if I would demonstrate how to compose a picture, how I work out that composition. So I'm looking at different elements and I know I want this tree in here that will probably live about in this area. The sky isn't that interesting today, so I'm gonna give that less space. So I automatically make those two decisions that way. And I know that the rest of this is gonna be lake, but how much of that information on this canvas, where, did this, where does the tree stop? Where does the land begin, the rocks, the reeds, and so forth? I also have to think and be cognizant of the way I want my eye to travel through the, the painting. So if I like these reeds over here, and I like the rocks right here, I'm gonna take and give it some space. So if I put rocks here, and the reeds over here, what I've done is I've allowed the eye to travel through the painting this way and out the back. So that might be one way to compose this. And I also wanted to demonstrate a little bit about painting these rocks under the water and I could use some of this floating algae down here to help direct the eye so we don't go out like this but so that algae helps to direct the flow going this way so I'll do some a little bit of the highlights on the water in here to say come this way and then we draw the viewer back that way so I can arrange these reeds in the water to have an interesting shape and I may make them blow that way, <laughs> just to keep the viewer in the picture. And the rocks, um, I can select some of these rocks to work for me. So if they come in this way, and there's some really pretty strong shadows on here, like that. There's some grass up here. And a little bit of the tree going like this. And I might put some of the cottonwood leaves kind of blowing down like this, just to show that it's sort of framing this area in. So that is my overall design, but now I want to lay in the values and how they're all going to be placed in here. So I'm going to give this background tree area back here, not a really dark dark, because I want to save the darkest areas for something like this tree. Trees in your paintings are always going to be your darkest value because they're getting the least light hitting it. Anything, any vertical structure like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna use these rocks to my compositional advantage this way. And then um, there's some shadows of the rocks under the water. And then 
just a light value over this reed area. So if I keep it sort of focused about like this and then drawing the eye back, I kind of like that. I, I don't really feel that I need to try it with the vertical. If I, if I did put my canvas vertically, I would do something like this. And then my tree would kind of get lost. It'd be too scrunched like that. I mean, I could leave the tree out and just do rocks like this. This might look a little bit more interesting if this was a sunset picture and it was more directional that way. If there was a more golden light back here and we didn't really care what was going on in the foreground and we could just go straight back. But this one I think is going to have a more interesting appeal. So let's go with the horizontal format. Okay, so I think that from this perspective you're going to get to see a little bit of everything in the scene. So I'm going to just try to leave this right here and talk about what I'm doing as I go along. So I do have my 9 by 12 canvas up here and I put it horizontally. It's a little bit longer format than what it was on my sketch, but I'm just going to go with it anyway. So let's just put a thin layer of burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a little ultramarine blue. Let's go at it this way. And because there's so much detail and information in this painting, there are parts of this where I'm going to be fast forwarding. Sometimes I begin a canvas, a painting um, with a toned canvas, other times not. Um, it just depends on the scene and the whatever it is I'm painting. Um, I think in this case because I really like the rocks with the um, water down below, I'm going to go with a little bit uh, of this foundation showing through. So that it's just kind of speaking for itself and I'll put a little a little layer of some of the reflective surface on top so I'm already sort of mentally thinking about where I want things to go in this painting okay so I always go a little darker than I need and I'm gonna wipe some of this off okay, so now you can see it's already lightened in value and going in along with my composition that I have, I just take a little bit smaller brush, a little ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, thinned mixture. Gonna lay in exactly that drawing that I had. Now the thinking work is already done for me, so that is one of the reasons that I love a thumbnail sketch. I want to try to get a little bit of character to these trees even though they are pretty straight there. I just don't want it to be like a stovepipe. So just giving that some interest. I think it might sketch. It comes up a little bit higher like that. So I'm just going to kind of sketch in an area that would be like a mass where those rushes are going to go. And I would like to put one of those windsurfers way back here, maybe a little one somewhere, just to draw the eye in and make it interesting. Maybe I'll put two trees here. I'll put a lot of foliage in here, just like that, a shadow area. You can always make adjustments to your plan as you're going along with your sketch. But you don't want to change it too much because that's where you did all your thinking and planning and all that. So I'm sort of just placing some rocks here and I may rearrange where those end up having their final destination here. And I really like how this green of the, all this foliage in here sort of cascades around these rocks. I'm not going to put that gigantic big rock right dead center. <laughs> It's just kind of weird there. So I'm giving this a bit of a value in here. The reeds. And 
And then in here I had mentioned doing some of the algae floating on top with that shadow underneath it. That looks really cool. And there's some rocks in here. I like this direction. I, I really like how this is going to flow. <laughs> Jessica, this is Eileen. Hi, Eileen. Good to meet you. Oh, it doesn't look you like your kids went to... Oh, they're up there. They just haven't appeared yet. No, yep. no, I'm not no. in your photo. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, are these I, acrylics you're using? Oils. Oils, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm rearranging the whole scene to try to fit an interesting composition on here. That works. I just kind of like this lead-in like this, so I have to take this pile of rocks and move it back. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I love this algae floating down here, and it creates Ooh. a shadow underneath. Well, this is cool. Mm -hmm. See you later. All right, thank you. So just laying in this darker mass of value back here, and I kind of like it there, too, to provide a frame. And these trees get pretty light towards the trunk because they're picking up more ambient light from the surrounding area. Okay, so I think that that's maintaining the integrity of what my sketch, uh, what I'd worked out in my sketch. So I like where some of that's going. So I think that I'm ready to jump into the color. And I think that this value back here could be a little bit darker before I get going. Too dark. Let's lighten that by just blending it in. Okay, so I'm at that place where I feel that I'm ready for color, and I'm going to start with the farthest away background and work my way foreground. So at this point, I'm going to use a little bit of liquid and a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm seeing just a touch of phthalo green, because if you add a little phthalo green to the color that you're mixing up for the sky, it gets a little bit lighter or a little warmer. The phthalo green makes it a little warmer. I'm enjoying using this liquid too because it is helping the paintings to dry a little faster. And uh, so I'm grateful for that as I'm doing more traveling as of late. And I'll be going to Ireland next Friday. Um, so this this will be that day's video. And the following week, I will be sharing a video with you from Ireland. Very excited about that. I took a little bit of yellow ochre here just to add some change th throughout there. I don't like to keep a passage any more than two inches without a change. Change in texture, value, color, um, whatever the case. If you go more than two inches without a change, it tends to get static. I'm going to take and make this a little bit brighter blue towards the top, just because it gives it, again, a little bit of variety in here. a few just to suggest I'll come back later and put in more sky holes in those trees but for now that's fine so what I'm going to do is just mix up a little bit brighter richer color because some of that's kind of thin and I just want a little more clarity in here richness of paint too much of the undertone is showing through this here because I will pretty soon be getting into the water and I'll need all those colors again but for now I'm gonna um, just get a different brush to work on the distant trees I don't want those. now I'll just clean this up okay so I squint down at those trees to try to get a broad range color first Paint those two colors, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue. 
and I always test it. So I'm going to compare this color. It seems like a dark valley, but I'm going to compare that over there to this. This is my darkest. So if I look at this in nature, and then only peripherally look over at those trees, they get a little bit lighter. So I need to lighten that value a little bit more. So that's a good way to gauge if you're on track with your values. Find the extreme in your vision and then compare everything else to that. I'm gonna just take this all the way across and then go back through and add my variations. You don't wanna use really thick paint in the distance. Not too thick because everything up front is more. More brush strokes, more color, more warmth, uh, things like that. And then everything further back is going to be um, less. More atmospheres in between you and that background. So make them a little bit cooler blue, more sky. So that would kind of, if you just keep that in your mind, then suddenly everything makes sense. That the further away your, your scene gets, there's more sky in between you and it. So they get lighter blue. And I'm trying to make an interesting skyline here. It doesn't have to match exactly that over there. A little bit of cadmium yellow. Right into that green mixture. Bit of dark shadows under those trees back there and then I'll cut into those the hills so the hills are on a different plane the trees are vertical so they're darker you can even see just in my hand it's darker this way but you lay it down it gets lighter darker so everything vertical back there is going to be much darker so you have the planes of the hills back there getting a lot lighter Not worried about the water yet, I'll put that in a little bit. So that is a really beautiful blue. One thing you do not want to do is just go blue and white, because that looks garish. So add a little bit of um, sienna or ochre just to neutralize the blue a little bit and see how different that looks now. It's a little bit more believable. So we're gonna kind of eliminate that bright, bright blue. And I'm gonna mix a bigger pile of it right here. it a little bit darker in some areas back there too. So I'm 
grabbing some yellow ochre and some of that green that I already had. And that's a lot of reflection from the reeds too. to give me a general flavor of where I'm going with this color in the water over here. I haven't added any of the rocks yet, so let's keep that pretty neutral at this point. I'm squinting down at these reeds, and I'm seeing this passage in here that's, when I squint, it's a little bit brighter, springier green down below. Touch of phthalo green, cad yellow, a little white. Just squint at that whole mass. This video today is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes. And it is sort of like a hybrid mix between YouTube and Netflix. In Skillshare, when you look them up, you can find classes on anything from fine art to music to writing, poetry, um, filmography, and just all kinds of anything that you would like to broaden your horizons in. They've got it covered and they have incredibly qualified teachers. And I'm just, I am actually really looking forward to studying more on film and developing greater, better videos and learning how to work my Photoshop and um, been exploring different teachers that are doing that and I just can't wait to get going on it. Check out Skillshare for growth, development, and a sense of community that you may be looking for in any of your creative endeavors. Discover what more than 7 million people have already been enjoying and taking advantage of. Right now, they're offering two free months for the premium membership. Premium membership is less than $10 a month for a whole year. So check out this affordable option down below for just exploring your creative side. All right, you guys, thanks so much. And as the green moves up, take a little bit more of the blue, yellow ochre. There's this middle passage that's a little bit cooler like that. And it gets a little darker towards the top. And I'm not going to draw them all individually, but if I squint down at them, I'll play with some of those tops here when I get to that point. For now, I'm just giving myself sort of that feeling of that there's reeds in here. shadow for the moss or the algae under the water. I just kind of want to put it in place so that I get a sense of that composition in there. Maybe some of these darker shadows and values in here too. Again, keeping my theme in my head, my, the, the flow of this composition and where I want it to go. I'm just going to push it a little bit more so that I have that feeling in here. So I want to 
want this shadow area back here to be cooler. And then I'll add a few greener elements in there, but just want that to be more supportive. Light. The sun's shifted and we're getting a lot more light on this tree, so I want to kind of hit that with the brighter sunlight area on the trunk. Yellow ochre, white. Down there like that. So I'll sculpt out more of the rocks in that same sort of manner. And I'll put some brighter green leaves in here too. just to make those decisions. Now I'm going to mix a middle tone. I'm going to get different piles of rock color in here. And I'll just dip into different ones for different rocks and then I'll add highlights to them later, or when I'm done with this passage. Let's get some of that blue as well. bug getting covered in paint. <laughs> He'll have a story to tell everybody today. So to do these rocks under the water, I just start out with a shadow and then I mix up because I have this background of the mud. I mix up a color that's just slightly more opaque than the mud and then I plant that for the top. And you don't want to get too fussy and add a lot of detail on these rocks under the water. But um, just enough to suggest something going on down there. And again, these are directional to help lead the eye back. I'll put in some of these brighter greens over here. Ochre, or uh, cad yellow, ultramarine blue. I'll start with the shadowy, a little bit darker tones of those, and then I'll add the highlights on top. So always working in layers with your painting. Look at the thing you're painting, and then find out what is the sub color, and then what color is on top. Put a brush brush stroke down, leave it alone, get some more paint, one or two strokes, got some foliage down here,
I'm going to spend some time just really focusing in on the foreground rocks, algae, and the uh, back in this way. Well, first I'm going to add some shines on these rocks, just so the third layer of highlights, just a few of them. Okay, so this algae here. The easiest way to paint these reeds is by squinting down. And I'm just going to um, simplify where I see these stronger bright greens. All right, well, now that my windsurfers are all gone, I'm going to try to paint one in from memory. <laughs> um, I remember that there was a board underneath. And I'll just take a neutral tone, and I'm going to put them way back here. Just kind of, how big? That, yeah, that's too big. my turn to windsurf so I'm gonna go do this. I'd like to thank my sponsors Skillshare for this program today and don't forget to click on the link for Skillshare and just look at what they've they're offering for the two free months for sure I think you guys will enjoy it all right you guys have a good day all right that wraps this video up I want to thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you next week from Ireland all right bye-bye